You're listening to Productivity Protected, the podcast that's all about data privacy and security. We'll unpack emerging threats, hot issues in data security, and top ways to protect your data and how you work. Here's your host, Spencer Kupferman. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Productivity Protected Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Kupferman. I'm the CEO of PKWare. It's an honor to do this podcast. I can't believe we've almost done a dozen of these since its inception. Uh, We've had unbelievable guests, our listeners out there who have been with us from all around the globe. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We're bringing great content, relevant content in the cyber world, in the technology world. Um, Today's no different. Today's no different. We got two, that's right, two fantastic guests here. Um, This episode, YUX UI, is crucial to cybersecurity software. It's something that's talked about all the time. How does software look? How does it feel? Totally different than how it works functionally. Um, this, This content that we have, these individuals that we have here today are some of the finest UX, UI designers in the cyberspace. We're lucky to have them here. I want to introduce them. Uh, I'll start with Mike Rohde. Um, Mike Rohde is a senior designer, has been with us for almost two years. Uh, it's an honor to have him. You're talking about 25 years of user experience as far as designing software. Um, and I, I want to I want to say this because this is I want to quote this. Uh, Mike Rohde seeks to understand what people need to design interfaces and experiences that are useful, delightful, and help them get things done. And I can attest to the fact that the work that he's doing is delightful because we hear it from our customers all the time. Um, I wanna mention something else about about Mike Rohde. Uh, Mike Rohde uh, has written two best-selling books. Maybe you bought them. If you didn't, maybe you should. Uh, The Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. Uh, if you follow Mike Rohde, hopefully I'm sure after this session you will, you'll you'll see he's out there all the time with all of his Sketchnote. This is a very interesting concept, one that quite frankly, I wasn't even familiar with uh, before I met Mike and started following him on LinkedIn. Mike leads online and in-person workshops uh, around the world on Sketchnoting techniques. Again, this is a very uh, fascinating uh, and efficient approach to learning. Uh, that helps students draw ideas simply to capture their ideas. Really cool, very fascinating stuff. Uh, He has illustrated multiple best-selling books like this. Uh, You might've heard of Rework, maybe Remote, um, The $100 Startup, uh, and The Culture Playbook. So we're honored. Secondly, who do we have? We got Mike Kornacki. Mike Kornacki has been with us for over three years at PKWare, but also... 20 plus years, you're talking about almost half a century of UX, UI experience on this podcast right now for you, okay? And again, for our customers who are enjoying the usability of our package, thank you very much for your support. And I'm sure you're appreciating, these are very two important people as it, when it comes to our product roadmap um, and our development. Uh, like I said, over 20 years of experience for Mike Kornacki, over three, almost four years here at PK, where we're lucky to have him as well. Uh, he really started UX design organizations at four different companies from the ground up. So he's like your UX, he's like Superman UX guy. I mean, there's no one else. There's just Mike Kornacki and then there's there's just no one. It's like Michael Jordan. You got Michael Jordan and then the rest of all the great players. You've got Mike Kornacki and the rest of the UX guys and gals. Uh, Mike was certified as a usability analyst in 2003. Wow. Does that seem like a long time ago to you guys too? Man. Uh, when UX design was really in its in its infancy uh, for, for a technology like this, he actually founded and started a UX meetup group in 2010 called MKE UX. That's MKE as in Milwaukee, the great city of Milwaukee, uh, UX, and now has over 450 members, over 450 members, uh, of this UX community. They have 
They have monthly guest speakers covering all areas of design, UX, research, and usability. So um, Mike also, Mike also earned his master's degree in user experience design from Kent University. And in 2017, while running the 32 member UX design team that he built, that's right, I go back to that point, he built it from the ground up at Johnson Controls, another great Milwaukee-based company. Um, and Mike also resides in Milwaukee uh, and uh, has two children. Um, he's a filmmaker. He's a filmmaker. And I was thinking, Mike, that maybe when this is all done, whatever that, whatever that means, but maybe you'd make a film about me. Um, okay, gentlemen. This is the true Mike and Mike show right here. I don't know if anybody ever saw the Mike and Mike show on ESPN, whatever that was. This right here at the Productivity Protected Podcast, we have the Mike and Mikes. Gentlemen, welcome. Well, thank you, Spencer. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, actually, it's it's kind of amazing that we are almost up on a year of this podcast, and we, we're we kind of making it in that year, that first year. It feels good to be part of it. Uh and, and trust me when I say this, if we made a, a film about Spencer, it would be amazing. It would be, it would be award worthy. That's all I'm saying. So thank you. And thank you, Spencer, for having me on the podcast as well. It's really fun to be part of the podcast. I listen every time episodes come out and enjoy learning more about the company and the people we're with. That's great, fellas. I, I appreciate it. Again, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days, because if you weren't here, you'd be You'd be UXing and UIing this great PK Protect platform, but great to have you uh, both here. Like I said, the the real Mike and Mike show is taking place right now, uh, and let's start if I could with Mike Kornacki here um, on this uh, first uh, opening salvo, if you will. Uh, here, can't wait to just jump in because I'm going to learn. Most of the time, um, when we're using technology, we don't really think about the specifics of how it works. All we really care about is that it works. That's it. That's all we care. Wake up in the morning, get our get our iPhone or Samsung, whatever we're using out there. We show up at work, we turn the computer, the computer works. We don't care about all the other machinations. We just care that it works. I think a lot of our customers also might be like that. They paid for it. They want it to work. I think that's a fair exchange of goods and services and and, and that's the way the world works. Um, that's partly due to successful UI, or as we call it, user interface uh, for our listeners out there. Um, and the user experience, or UX, as we like to call it around the shop, uh, UX design. Um, so let's start, if we can, Mike Kornacki, let's start uh, by breaking down the difference between UI and UX. So user interface versus user experience uh, for our listeners? Yeah, I get this question quite a bit. And the way I look at it is, is a user interface is really the elements and the content and the buttons and the interactions that are on the page. So what people see, what they look at when they're using a piece of software. The user experience is kind of a combination of two things. It is one, how the software actually works. What are the expectations of the user when they click on a button and, and move to the next page? You know, they have an expectation of what they're going to see. So that's part of it. The other part is actually how people feel about that experience, whether they get um, joy out of that user interface or it frustrates them. That is all part of that experience. Mike Rody, anything to add to that? Not too much. I believe that uh, it's important that the two work together so you can have a great user interface, but a bad experience. And it's really important that they work together and that they are thought of together because it's important that they are a unit and not simply two separate things. I mean, that's great. I think, first of all, great definition, Mike Kornacki, and a great follow-up, uh, Mike Rohde, on the realities of uh, making sure that they're integrated. I think that's that's an important point um, and shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be left short. I mean, that's I think that might be taken for granted, actually, in certain situations. 
uh, that these things just automatically work together. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, as you two know, uh, much better than I. So basically, from what you just shared with us, let's just go with that. It sounds like how a user interacts and experiences software can really make or break the success of a product. I, I don't think I'm over uh, exaggerating that. Um, I've been a user of, of software products the last 25 years myself. Uh, when it comes to complex solutions, so now we go to, now we really start to get into the nitty gritty here. Um, I, again, as, a, as someone who has been around technology almost my whole life um, in the software space, um, I don't know that there's any more difficult problem to solve in the software world um, outside of cybersecurity. There are certain parts of cybersecurity that are exceptionally complicated to try to solve. We actually do a really good job. I guess, why is user experience and the user interface design just so critical in these types of solutions? I'm going to start with Mike Rohde on this one. I think it's important that we consider this because of the complexity of a challenge that someone's trying to achieve with software, that we have to think about how are they using it. So it's very important that we understand how the user is using the tool so we can build it in a way that makes sense to them. And that we're also really clear about every step of the way, because very often maybe you're not using that tool every single day. And you might come back in three months and forget what the process was. So it's important to build in a logical process, make things clear, have very clear uh, wording and explanations of things so that if that's the case for someone, they're in a good position to pick right up where they were, or at least be able to logically figure out what they're going to do in the software and get rolling right away. Mike Kornacki, would you like to add to that? Yeah, I, I also think that in cybersecurity, we have kind of a unique um, set of users. We have a, a user chain, as I like to call it. So we have the administrators of our software and, you know, at our customer sites that, you know, are really in control of, of what are the rules around that software and how it's being used. And they have a set of users that use that software to protect the data that they're, they're using or that they're distributing to, again, their customers and their users. So we have this like three-tiered user system where at the end of it, it may be for like the financial institutions, it may be a nurse or um, you know a gardener or somebody who's using a financial service and they don't really even know a thing about cybersecurity other than that they are trusting the financial institution they're working with to protect their data. So we have to make sure that our experience from that very end user all the way up to the administrators of our software have an experience that relates to how they use the software. You know, you all are bringing up two points I never even thought of. And I knew I was going to come on here and learn great points that I did not think specific, know about it, but didn't think about it from the perspective of the UI UX perspective. So that's that's great. That's great perspective um, and very thoughtful responses from, from both of you. Thank you for that. Let's keep going. So, um, so really, I guess the best kind of user experience design is one that users don't actually notice. So when I think about that line, I think about um, I know we got a Packers fan on here and I'm a sports fan. It's almost like not noticing the referee or the umpire in a sporting match, a basketball game, a football game, a baseball game. The best umpires and authorities who manage the game are ones you don't notice. So let me keep going with that. How do you how do you even, I guess, start creating something that's intended to not be noticed um, if it's when it's done well? And I'll start with Mike Kornacki. You know, that is a great question. And it is one of the hardest things to do because you still are putting something in, in front of somebody and they have to use it. You know, it might be part of their day. And I, I, just, I just published a blog post talking about this, that basically users want to do a thing. Whatever that thing is, it's part of their job. And most likely the part that we own in that string of things they need to do throughout their day is a smaller part, but they still have to do it successfully. And if we do our job poorly, 
we get in the way of them completing that task that they need to do to do their job. And if we do get in their way, what is our responsibility in fixing that and, and making sure we're not in their way? Because if we are contributing to them not having job satisfaction, I believe there's almost a moral uh, responsibility that we have to make sure we're not making someone hate their job or hate that part of their job. So it is really crucial that we get it right and that we understand from the user's perspective, what is it that won't get in their way? I understand that 100%. That's, that's, uh, that's to me, that seemed the logical way to go about uh, starting something like that from scratch. Mike, Mike Rody, I'm sure you want to weigh in. I think it's important to understand what users think and how they, how they think. And one of the ways we do that is with user testing user research. And the way we do that is we observe people using the tool and we try to understand where, why are they doing things and where are they going? Typically we'll give them a task. We'll have them perform the task. We have an idea in our minds what probably is the way they would do that task, but inevitably they will do it a different way. They will find a different way or they'll do it in a different order than we think. And it's really fascinating for us, especially when you have multiple tests like this to see you know, we think it's a certain way, but our users are actually using a different way. And it can be an advantage to us to understand that and then adapt our software to the way it's actually used, not simply the way we want to present it or project it to the user. And that's another way that it will feel more, you know, in the background, right? It's because it works the way I expect it to. It doesn't get in my way. There's no friction. I get my job done. I'm in, I'm out, and I'm on my next thing. Yeah, there's there's a lot to be said for um, I think if you're a software company and you're you're not um, you're not watching closely to user behavior of your software, uh, you're going to be a dinosaur because you're what you're doing is you're really it's like trying to hit a baseball in the dark. Um, if we can we'll go go to Mike Kornacki, um, when we talk about and, and both of you have mentioned the word thing. Um, you know, help do a thing. And, and I think that I'd, I'd like for our listeners, um, if we could just unpack that a little more for our listeners, uh, I think that could be very useful uh, just for this, all this content in this discussion around UI and UX. Uh, and I'll start with, so we'll start with Mike Kornacki. Yeah. So the way I always think about it is, is if you can boil down what a user is trying to do to its very simplest component. And that component is what problem are they trying to solve? Because that's ultimately what they're doing from day to day, from task to task. They are basically problem solving. So when I always say a user just wants to do a thing, most likely that one thing in our software, for example, is one part in a chain of many things they have to do to give their CEO a report on, on the status of their security of their data. Or um, they also may need to make sure that they're meeting criteria for certain uh, certifications that they have. So that is what I mean by let's do a thing or let's help them do a thing is, is that it could be something as minuscule as a checkbox on a screen, or it could be something as complicated as protecting a, an individual user's emails. No, I appreciate that. Appreciate, again, we're going from solving some basic UX, UI issues all the way and scaling, having to really, you have to really be able to scale uh, where we are uh, and in the space that you you all are working in. So I appreciate that. Mike, Mike Rody, would you like to comment? The one thought I'd have in this area is that we don't often understand what that thing is. And so our job as user experience designers is to try and understand and continue to understand what the things are that our customers wish to do because it changes, right? It doesn't stay the same all the time. And as things change in their environment, we need to be aware of that and then adjust the thing that we help them do to be relevant, to main, maintain relevancy and to be ahead of the curve and actually start thinking based on all these things that you say you're doing, maybe there's, how do you feel about this thing that we're considering? Would that be helpful for you? And that's where that research can really give us a leading edge. No, I love that. I mean, you got, you, besides the fact you guys are exceptionally smart and great at what you do, you got very soothing voices. So I don't, I don't know about, 
you know, our customers just have to feel good with the compassion that you're expressing around the whole UI UX experience. And it comes out in our software. That's great. We've got time for one more. We got one more question here. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it up uh, for this episode. But let me let me jump right in. Mike, Mike, Mike Rohde, uh, you're going to you're going to take us home here uh, to 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 start off. So um, how does, I guess, helping we're going to stick with that thing, the thing uh, uh, theme here. Uh, how does helping people do a thing relate uh, to cybersecurity uh, specifically? Well, that's really fascinating because not only are our customers doing a thing in cybersecurity, that one thing that that one user is doing could impact hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people, right? So if we get it right, we can really help them and we can really put them in a good position. If we get it wrong, it could be really catastrophic, right? If they misunderstand the interface and do something that they think is doing one thing and it's doing something else, or it's not doing the thing that they thought they, that they were doing, we could put that user in peril. And then, of course, you know our software uh, bears the blame for that. So we, we take it very seriously, uh, the actions that we help them do and try to, again, understand what they do, but then also follow with clarity. So it's clear what's happening. It's clear what they're doing. It's clear what will happen so that everything is really clear to the user so they don't make those kinds of mistakes. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, it could be catastrophic for tens, hundreds, thousands, millions of people. Um, you know, you could translate that into dollars. Um, as we're on this podcast, there's dozens and dozens of, of severe cyber attacks, uh, ransomware, malware, um, uh, data breaches happening uh, as we speak um, that could be catastrophic uh, for some of the world's largest companies and, and of course, government institutions uh, being attacked by nefarious actors all across the globe, uh, which could result in not only uh, a, 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 a horrific dollar impact, but uh, real lives are at stake here. People get hurt. Um, and I think we've seen that uh, with wars waging uh, around the both clandestine and out in the open, uh, the intent is to hurt people, and and uh, and we are, uh, we are. I'm proud to say we're at the forefront of trying to make for a more peaceful, safer world uh, to protect data um, and make sure that these institutions, both financial and otherwise, uh, have the wherewithal uh, to protect themselves against these nefarious actors. And so, I thought that that's a that's a great point. Uh, Mike Rudy, uh, Mike Kornacki, any any thoughts here as we start to wrap it up on 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 this particular issue? Yeah, I, just to to piggyback on what you just said, Spencer, is that you know in my three years of working here and and talking to our customers, the one thing that I've noticed uh, universally is how much they care, how much they care about their customers. It's not just that they're 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 uh, security experts and that's their job they actually really really care that they're taking care of their customers and their end users and making sure they're protected because they want people to be safe because they're good people i think in the chain from from everyone that i know here at pk we're all the way through to our, to our end customers there's a lot of caring going on to protect people. And I think that's one of the, the one of the greatest things that we have to offer is how much we care about protecting people here. No, I appreciate that. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, we, um, as I said, I've said countless times on, on this podcast, I, I really, and I really do believe this, we've got, um, we've got the greatest people uh, and our customers should sleep well at night knowing we've got uh, not just, smart, bright people who are taking home a paycheck, but people who care uh, about uh, our customer's environments and then the customer care, as you said, the customer caring about their customer environments, there's a chain reaction here. And that has to work in order for the all these partnerships to come together uh, and create a successful uh, a marriage, if you will. You know, what we do is we solve the world's most pressing uh, cybersecurity problems and uh, around data protection specifically. That's what we do. Um, we are out of time. I wanna thank uh, Mike Rohde, our senior designer for user experience, 
for joining us today. Uh, the like, go check out the sketchbook stuff, man. It's awesome. Go go out there, get on LinkedIn. Michael, link, right? You're gonna let Mike's gonna link up with you if you send an invitation. He'll link with you. Go read about it. It's a fascinating, fascinating concept. Of course, after you listen to this podcast, and then of course, Mike Kornacki. Uh, Mike, appreciate uh, appreciate you uh, joining us. Appreciate both of your service. Uh, to the to this great uh, institution we have, our great community. I always talk about community. You guys know that I talk about community. Uh, we have a great community here. It's because of folks like yourselves, the contributions uh, that you're making every hour um, that you're involved with PK Aware. So I uh, want to thank both of you. Again, uh, Mike Kornacki, Director, User Experience. Mike Rohde, Senior Designer, User Experience. Both of the, talking about 45, 50 years of uh, designing uh, user interfaces. Uh, that's why we've, uh, big reason why we have fantastic software, not the only reason, not the only reason, right? We're gonna leave out our friends who are also uh, uh, doing doing great work alongside you. Uh, but two very important reasons here. Glad you were able to join us today. I hope you'll, hope you'll both come back and visit us. This isn't like one time. Appreciate you guys coming in here today uh, and being a guest on Productivity Protected Remember, this episode, why UX UI is so crucial uh, to developing cyber security software. Uh, gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Spencer. This was, uh, this was a pleasure. I, I can talk about this stuff all day, every day, as you already know. And uh, I just, I would really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about this because uh, we are very passionate about PK Wear and about the products that we make and and our customers we, we love doing this stuff so uh, I would be glad to talk to you anytime and uh, you and I need to get together anyways because we have to start the outline for the script for the Spencer movie we're that's that's done deal we're we're, we're doing that and uh, and Mike Rohde, uh thanks so much uh, for joining us and and uh, and good luck uh, good luck with your continued work at PKware and of course with with all the great work you do in the in the sketchbook world. Thank you, Spencer. It's been a real blast to be here. We love this stuff, as you can probably tell. We'll talk about it with anybody over a beer or over a coffee. So so good to have uh, us on here, so we can share our passion with uh, the fans of the company and those who that we will love to just share this with. That's great. That's great. Thanks again to both of you. Hope you're uh, will stay warm in Milwaukee. Uh, we're in the into into the winter months. Uh, but they'll be over before we know it. Uh, but again, appreciate all the work you do. We'll see you, see you too uh, in the office in Milwaukee uh, sooner rather than later. Want to wish, of course, I want to wish everybody a safe and happy holiday season, a meaningful holiday season, whatever holiday uh, that you celebrate. And most importantly, be safe. Be safe out there. Be responsible with whatever you're doing. Please have a good time. Enjoy and be merry. There's a lot to celebrate. Uh, and uh, and enjoy, but be safe with your families. Uh, and I'll see you all in uh, in 2023. If you have any, uh, we want feedback. We love feedback from our listeners. Podcast at pkware.com. Podcast at pkware. That's pkware.com. Please send it in. If there's a certain guest you'd like, a certain topic, we've had feedback. Um, someone said, hey, we we want to we want to we want you to talk about this. Can you get a guest for this topic? I, I love, we love getting that. Um, or, Hey, I have a guest speaker that might be good. We'd love for you to look into this individual. We love receiving that feedback. I even if it's just feedback uh, about um, something we've actually already done, how could we've done it better? Did we not cover the whole entirety of that subject? Of course, we have a limited amount of time here. Like, like these gentlemen said, they could talk about it all day. We don't have all day, but within that short window of time, uh, we do our best to kind of pack a lot in, uh, get our guests front and center to speak and 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 tell their their piece and share their knowledge uh, with all of you. I'm Spencer Kupferman, your host for the Productivity Protected Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Productivity Protected. Learn more about how PKWare protects data and workflows by visiting pkware.com. And join us next time for more insider info on protecting data wherever it lives and moves.